Bourbon has almost reinvented itself in the 21st century because of the passion and creativity that is truly the lifeblood of the industry today. It's no longer only about having a distinguished family legacy, although many of the newer brands can trace their lineage back several decades. But today's consumers are seeking something more. They want unique and fresh takes on this highly revered spirit. They don't want to just drink it. They want to experience bourbon. Uh, but I do like to collect whiskey and bourbon. Uh, and really, to be honest with you, I like to collect them in pairs uh, because I like to open one and drink it. Because if we only have one, we get told what's in it and we can read reviews of what's in it, but we really never know what's in it. I do what I do for the adventure of what did the distillers put in the bottle. They're trying to do the best they can do. Well, let's go see how well they did it. And that's what, that's the chase for me. It's just spectacular. And the, and the variety is from A to Z. Driving the current bourbon boom are a lot of creative ideas and young brands that didn't even exist 20 years ago. These success stories are a pretty good indication that the American dream, with its ingenuity and innovation, is still alive and well. Now, aging spirits in a barge is different than aging bourbon in a rickhouse in Kentucky. Uh, first of all, there's already a blueprint for how you age in a, in a rickhouse in Kentucky or, or anywhere for that matter. Uh, there's not one for aging spirits on a, on a barge on the Mississippi River. We pursued an experimental permit because we didn't know if anybody would, would grant us this uh, uh, license to operate. Uh, we received the experimental and we ran the process. After about six months, we noticed a difference with the, the barge bourbon versus that on land and decided to, to go kind of double down. And, and, and that's when we sought and ultimately received a, a, a DSP or a distilled spirits permit. And uh, it makes our operation really the first bonded and permitted uh, floating facility anywhere in the world. Hank was introduced to Jeff early on through Jason McMurray, now a partner in the Brindiamo Group. Forgive the analogy, but I think of uh, kind of the, the silent but deadly fart. You know, it's something that uh, you don't hear, you don't really see, but when you know it, you know it's strong. Uh, so I think the reason that people go to Jeff is because um, it, it's a word of mouth game. And uh, if you haven't been in this business, you, you have no idea who Brindiamo is but uh, it's such a small industry that uh, after a while, uh, you get to know pretty much most of the players. And um, if you have a need for bulk whiskey, uh, there's only a handful of people you can call. So eventually you have to uh, run into the Brindiamo guys. Some of the things we've learned over the process in, in putting this on the barge. So while the barrel is losing liquid inside it, sitting in a rickhouse, it doesn't move. On the barge, it rolls, so you get more coverage from the wood, and generally his product tastes like older product because he's getting more interaction uh, with the wood on the barge. And he's been, it's been fun to watch. It's been fun. Uh, Hank's been very creative and done a great job with it. Yeah. Uh, Jeff and Jason were really uh, instrumental in, in us getting launched because uh, they'd been through the process and they knew who to call and, and knew where we needed to go and, and shop and talk and, and all these things. So uh, they set us up with some wonderful meetings early on um, that really helped us get uh, where we are today. Harry Bringle is the owner and pit master of one of Nashville's most successful barbecue joints and the only pit master in the world to own his own spirits company. So I met Jeff Hopmeyer probably seven years ago. It was after I had already started my spirits company, but uh, while I was in the early, early days of it. And um, we, I met Jeff through a mutual friend at my liquor distributor. He said he thought it was somebody that I would uh, probably want to know. I had heard his name from somebody else, and so uh, I called him up and we sat down and had lunch. Kerry Brindle is amazing. Uh, his barbecue joint, Peg Leg Porker, is great. 
Carrie got to me actually through Jason McMurray. And Carrie has all these crazy ideas. I want to build a distillery. I want to build a this. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I want to create my own bourbon. But I need product. Uh, we hit it off as friends. And then he's also been a informal consultant for me over the years. And then I buy some product from Jeff as well. He's one of the largest brokers in the country. Always has a line on what's going on in the industry. And so if I want to bounce an idea off something, off of somebody uh, or ask them what they think their read is on something, then I know I can get an honest answer from Jeff and that's nice to have that. We gave him the best advice we can to, to, to help him out, to make it look like something that I thought uh, would be respectable for what he's doing. The reason that Peg Leg Porker is successful now is because of the mistakes that I've made in the past and the fact that I've learned from those mistakes. Uh, that came from a lot of hard work, from a lot of trial and error, and a little help from my friends like Jeff that would have been a sounding board uh, and able to give me advice on which direction I may or may not want to go. Jeff is also known for connecting people and great ideas. He approached Suzanne Pfeiffer Pevitt, a successful Napa winery owner, about starting a new brand at Bardstown Bourbon Company that would be finished in Pfeiffer Pevitt Cabernet barrels. I was a little bit starstruck because I'm a huge fan of Steve Nally, Hall of Fame master distiller. I mean, just. Oh, I mean, just the kindest man. He's a cross between my daddy and my granddaddy, and the two of us hit it off instantly. He basically said, I know nothing about making Napa Cabernet, you know. And I said, well, that's interesting, because I know nothing about making bourbon, but the, together, we could really do something special. And that was 2016, and we said, let's do it. Let's make a bourbon together, and at the time, Bardstown was a thought. They were just getting started. We didn't have packaging, we didn't have bottling, we didn't have design, nothing. And so I was in, I'm so proud I was in through Jeff's guidance with that development from the very, very beginning. And that was the beginning of Pfeiffer Pavit Reserve Bourbon.